Thank you very much, uh, Presiding Officer. And I'd like to declare at the beginning that my register of interest, where I own a fishery or, or jointly own a fishery on the River Spey, which relies on tourism and con contributes to the £20 million that's generated from fishing on Speyside alone. Now, Scotland's got a great story to tell when it comes to tourism. You know, we've got a sector that contributes £4.5 billion to our economy, counts for one in 11 jobs, and sees visitors spend over a billion pounds on eating and drinking as well. That's the good news. And let me just point out that it would only be a fool that would kill the goose that lays the golden egg. And that's what we seem to be seeing this afternoon, and that is extremely dangerous. Because what we're hearing from industry is things are going badly wrong. We've heard from the Chief Executive for the Scottish Tourism Alliance, who says that the government policies will do limited good and risk maximum harm. Now, why would you do that? Why would anyone do that? Now, some of the failings that we've heard about this afternoon are quite interesting. We've talked about transport, and we've got some great destinations up in the Highlands and Islands, and we've got more luck people to come and visit them, but they can't. Why can't they? Because there aren't any ferries, or the ferries are delayed, or they're broken down, or there's a booking chaos. And I'm really interested that Keith Brown sat at the back and made, wouldn't comment on the ferries. He was one of the people that contributed to the fact that 801 and 802 weren't delivered on time. And what Islanders would say, what I will in a minute, what Islands would say to you, Mr Brown, is shame on you because they're losing out. Mr Brown, I'll give away to you. Keith Brown. Does he accept there's been more investment in ferries by this government than any previous government? And also the fact that the government, the government which he supports gave £14 million to a ferry company that had no ferries. Edward Mountain. What, what I will accept, presiding officer, is the last ferry, new ferry that was delivered to the Scottish ferry fleet was in 2015. For goodness sake, we're eight years old. We need some new ferries. Get on with it. You promised them us in 2016. Now, I know about businesses across the Highlands and Islands who are already cutting their commitments in 2024. About 10% of them are wondering whether they should still be in business. In fact, a lot of people are getting cancellations from repeat customers because they cannot be guaranteed that people will be able to arrive on time. What a sorry state of affairs that is. Now, we've also heard today briefly about the A9, and I'm not going to reiterate it, but I travel it twice a week. I come down here and I go back on it. And those tourists that use it to get around the Highlands or up to the Highlands will be as shocked as I am when you drive down it. Not only are the potholes in it, but the driving and the standard of the road is extremely poor. We were promised in 2007 we'd get the new A9. It still hasn't been delivered. Now, the other issue I want to touch very briefly on, if I may, is short-term lets. Now, we've had discussion about short-term lets, and we've seen that this government is going to legislate on it. But well, I think it's a really bad idea in the Highlands and Islands because we rely on those short-term laps to get tourists up there, tourists who will come up and spend money in the local economy. And it is the local government who've been tasked with sorting out the licensing scheme. And they've only sorted out about a fifth of the applications that they've seen. Uh, and since March this year, some of the ones within Highland Council have been put on hold because it's too difficult to deliver. Well, if the Minister wants to stand up and tell me I'm wrong, tell me I'm wrong, stand up and tell me You're I'm wrong. About to if conclude, not, Mr. I suggest uh, that, oh, I'm in the last minute, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so not only is there a problem with short-term lets, Minister, I'm happy to discuss this afterwards with you, is the fact that there is tourism tax being raised. Tourism tax will not work. Let me tell you, the reason why it works in Europe is because there's a less rate of VAT. So, presiding officer, in summary, what I'd like to say is to the government, please don't kill the goose that lays the golden egg, because that's exactly what you're doing at the moment.